evening, everybody. It's good to be together for the Bible study of the book of Revelation. And I'm sure we are enjoying this journey. And today we are going to do first a recap of chapters 12 and 13. And, uh, and then we will move into chapters 14 and 15. And after that, we will have some questions and answers. The questions that came to me during this journey of the book of Revelation during these days. Wonderful. Shall we pray? Our loving Father, we truly want to thank you for every viewer, every listener that is um, here, Lord God, and we pray that you would bless each one that we would have listening hearts to receive from your word and we would be built up in faith and we would be strong and courageous during these difficult times we want to thank you also for the miraculous escape from uh, this cyclone that was going to hit the west coast of india we thank you for saving mumbai and even the surrounding places we want to give you all the praise and glory you are the god of the heavens and the earth and we bow down before you and we give you all the praise and glory bless this time of the bible study in jesus mighty name we pray and god's people say amen, amen. say truth truth amen hallelujah so now Last week, we spoke about the seven midweek personages and uh, we will just recap very quickly and uh, looking at Revelation chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2, we look at the first frame, right? And it's speaking about the sun-clothed woman who is none other than Israel as a nation amen the woman is Israel amen are we clear on that wonderful and this woman has the 12 stars on her head she's clothed with the Sun as well as standing on the moon these are all the constellation of stars and planets and the formation that we saw recently in uh, 2017, I guess, the, the alignment of the planets during the four blood moons and the two solar eclipses. The second uh, personage that we see in verses 3 and 4 is the dragon, and he's none other than Satan himself. The third one is verse 5, and it speaks about the man-child, the Christ. Amen. But also, we see that it could speak about the Jews, the 1,44,000, even during the tribulation time, where they are the nucleus of new israel amen so not only christ being birthed amen but it is from the nation of israel from the tribe of judah but it is also the one like forty-four thousand being born again in the first half of the uh seven year tribulation in the first three and a half years wonderful we move on to verses 7 to 12, and there we see the archangel Michael, the warring angel in heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, verses 13 to 17, we see the Jewish converts. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, um, chapter 13, verses 1 to 10 we see the beast coming out of the sea like the seas of humanity and this is none other than the antichrist 
Amen. The Antichrist and um, the details of which we will see in the next frame. And then verses 11 to 18, we spoke about the beast of the earth who is the false prophet. So this is the Antichrist and the false prophet. Amen. Now we move on to the second frame and here we see this ugly looking beast with seven heads, the heads of lions and uh, this beast out of the sea is the Antichrist, the seven heads of world domination, namely Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persian, Grecia, uh, Rome, and the new revised Rome to come, okay? And the ten kings are the nations of the Antichrist during the tribulation. Amen. So, these ten horns are none other than the ten uh, nation confederacy, which could be very much the former Roman Empire, nations ruled by Rome. And this could be part of the EEC nations and even the nations around the Middle East, including um, North Africa. Amen. So having recapped, now we move into chapter 14. Shall we read chapter 14 of the book of Revelation? Okay. Now, verses 1 to 5. Then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name. The lamb's father's name is Yahweh, and the lamb's name is Yahushua. The Holy Spirit is the Ruach HaKodesh. These names are all Hebrew names. Amen. Having his father's name written on their foreheads. Amen. So, verse 2. And I heard a voice from heaven like the voice of many waters and like the voice of loud thunder. And I heard the sound of harpists playing their harps. Now this is a wonderful music, a heavenly music, a melody that is coming from heaven. Harps will always speak of melody. Amen. The, the stringed instruments speak of melody. The wind instruments speak of harmony and the percussions speak of rhythm. Those are the drums and other percussion instruments. Amen. So, verse 3, and they sang. So there was singing and there was music in heaven. Praise the Lord. So we're going to have singing and music and worship in heaven. Wow. And they sang, as it were, a new song. Praise the Lord. When you are born again, God gives you a new song. Amen. This new song flows from a brand new born again spirit. Praise the Lord. It's not an old song. It's not old wine. It's new wine in the new wine skin. Praise the Lord. So a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders, and no one could learn that song except the hundred and forty-four thousand who were redeemed from the earth. This is a wonderful spiritual experience that they have had and out of that experience 
and touch from the Lord, like we would say, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in Him. Amen. Only the one who experiences this brand new life in Christ is able to sing the brand new song. Amen. Hallelujah. The song of redemption. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 4. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These were redeemed from among men, being first fruits to God and to the Lamb. And verse 5, And in their mouth was found no guile. Alleluia! For there was no deceit at all in their mouths, for they were without fault before the throne of God. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So there was no deceit, no guile in their hearts, and that was reflected in what was flowing out of their mouths. The sweet waters, not bitter waters. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So these 1,44,000 are now on the heavenly Mount Zion. Praise the Lord. They have been raptured. They are the ones who were saved. 12,000 from every tribe. They are the nucleus of the new Israel. They have been now raptured into heaven. And they are on the heavenly uh, Mount Zion. And there they are, standing before the Lord as first fruits of Israel. Praise be to God. Could we shout, Hallelujah! Amen. Hallel in Hebrew is praise, and Yah is the name of God, the Hebrew poetry brief name of God, Yahweh and Yahoshua meant to be Yah. So hallelujah is not praise the Lord, but praise His actual name. Praise Yah. Lord is only a title. Amen. We move now on to verses 6 and 7. And starting with this one are the three angels because Today we are looking at the three and the seven angels of God. Okay? So now is the first one. The angel of the everlasting gospel. Amen. So then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Verse 7, Sing with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him. For the hour of His judgment has come. And worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Hallelujah. We need to Fear God and give glory to Him. This was the angel with the everlasting gospel, good news, with a message to tell the whole world, all the nations, every nation and tribe and tongue. Praise be to God. Amen. Then we move on to, so that's the first angel preaching the everlasting gospel. Wonderful. Why? Because God is hastening the work. Because the souls have to be saved in the short time. Otherwise, they will be lost for eternity. And they must not bow down to the mark of the beast. Amen. They must not bow down to the Antichrist. Amen. So, we look at verse 8. 
now there is a second angel amen of the three angels and another angel followed saying Babylon is fallen is fallen the great city because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the rat of a fornication now Babylon stems from Babel right from the book of Genesis chapter 11 where we see Nimrod building the Tower of Babel trying to defy God and in all that satanic rebellion we see they were all cursed with different lang tongues and languages and so they there was confusion and they were spread out all over the world amen now uh, Babylon is this whole mystery Babylon is nothing else but the uh, harlot church and the whole one world religion that has I believe that has already begun in a trickle and it's going to snowball into a one world religion it has already begun with Chrislam and the Baha'i movement and all uh, religions coming together to to have a common doctrine a common code and this will be a Christless one it will be a godless one but only glorifying Satan Lucifer and the Antichrist okay now this angel announces the fall of Babylon and it's a it's a warning on the impending doom on planet earth over mystery Babylon okay now let's move on to verses um, 9 to 11 then the third angel, angel now it's the third angel that has come the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or his hand he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb this is the judgment of God verse 11 and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name mind you people will try and commit suicide like Judas did but said the torment will have just begun because they will burn in hell in the lake of fire for eternity imagine this eternal death will never end and its smoke is going to arise for eternity wow now we'll move on to verses 12 and 13 these were the three angels that pronounced the first one proclaimed the gospel and uh, the next two um, pronounced judgments one on Babylon and the other one on the beast worshippers this judgment uh, was the torment with fire and brimstone that would never end we look at 12 and 13 here is the patience of saints here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus 
that is Yahushua. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, that is in the Lord Jesus Christ, from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Hallelujah. This is the blessing of the tribulation saints. Many are going to be saved. Millions, in fact. The patience of saints who die henceforth. Maybe some of them were backslidden and did not get caught up in the rapture. Maybe some were being witnessed to by their uh, believing family members or friends or neighbors and they rejected the gospel at that time and they have moved into the seven year tribulation but as they dug into then the, the books that were given to them maybe or the tapes or whatever or they've looked into the videos and they went over them and now they've gotten serious and they said this is the truth our friends have gone away they've been caught up in the rapture this is the truth and they may be standing for the Lord now even if they have to be martyred for the Lord so here are saints during the tribulation who stand for the truth the blessing of the tribulation saints and the patience of the saints who die henceforth with long suffering with patience and in faith they will wait for their promise amen praise the lord we move now on to verses 14 to 16 and i looked and behold a white cloud and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud. Amen. Trust in your sickle, and reap for the time has come. For you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Praise the Lord. All these are symbols that man uses. God really uses these symbols so that man can understand through symbols what he's trying to convey with few words. So here is a scenario of the Lord sitting on the clouds with a golden crown and a sickle in his hand and it is time for the harvest of the earth. So he casts the sickle down to gather in the harvest now verses 17 okay um, verses 17 to 20 then another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven he also having a sharp sickle and another angel came out from the altar who had power over fire and he cried with a loud cry to him who had the sharp sickle saying thrust in your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth for her grapes are fully ripe so the angel thrust his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and threw it into the great wine press of the wrath of God and the winepress was trampled 
outside the outside the city and blood came out of the wine press up to the horses bridles amen up to the bridles of the horses for one thousand six hundred furlongs that is about a hundred and eighty four miles it was a river of blood it was a river of blood this was bloodshed all over mind you it is it is a terrible scene it's the reaping of the vine of the earth the great wine press of God's wrath death comes and and there's death amongst the human beings blood is shed and uh, it's it's a bloody scene it's a very bloody scene now we will move on to chapter 15 looking at we'll skip verse 1 and come back to it later but we will look at verses 2 to 4 now 2 to 4 talks about the victor's song let us read it and I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire and those who have the victory over the beast over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name standing on the sea of glass having hops of God amen and they sang the song of Moses the servant of God and the song of the Lamb saying great and marvelous are your works Lord God Almighty just and true are your ways O King of the Saints who shall not fear you O Lord and glorify your name for you alone are holy for all nations shall come and worship before you for your judgments have been manifested this is the victor song of the victors over the beast before God just like the song of Moses when they when they um, had victory over over uh, Pharaoh and his army amen remember in Exodus chapter 15 where Miriam goes dancing with the tambourines and it's a prophetic song of Moses it's a song of deliverance it's a song of redemption so all these are worshiping God with this beautiful song and with music praise the Lord and this is a parenthetical because uh, in chapter 15 and verses 2 onwards uh, till verse 8 it uh, it talks about the victor song and all the saints of God there and in heaven and then the ushering of the seven angels so now let us look at verse 1 okay then I saw this is chapter 15 then I saw another sign in heaven great and marvelous seven angels having the seven last plagues for in them the wrath of God is complete the 21 judgments of God seven trees are 21 amen so these are the seven last judgments of God that he executes um, let's look now at verses 5 to 8 after these things I looked and behold 
the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open. There was an inner shrine, so to say. And out of the temple came the seven angels, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure bright linen, and having their chest girded with golden bands. Then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. The temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from His power and no one was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. My. So the seven bowls of God's wrath are prepared. The seven angels are ready to pour out the seven bowls of wrath. And this we will discuss next week in chapter 16. Amen. Praise the Lord. The, these are visions between the warnings and the seven final plagues. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I trust we are learning. I trust we are reading. I trust we are meditating. And if there is any question that you have, please send it to either Sister Bella or send it to me and be sure, be assured you will receive the answer for those queries. Amen. We trust the Holy Spirit to give us an understanding and wisdom and knowledge to answer those beautiful questions that you come up with. Okay. Now, as we said, we are going to look at some questions that you forwarded to me or to Bella uh, these last few weeks. Let me look at them. Now, the first question, I'm going to look at about, say, approximately nine questions that have come to me. I won't mention names of the people who have asked uh, these questions. The first question is, why is the book of Revelation called the little book? Amen. The book of Revelation is the final prophecy and the final book of the Holy Bible. God's manual given to man. Amen. And this prophetic book is not very long, but it is a very important book that was sealed at one time, but the Lord Jesus opened it. Amen. And allowed Prophet John Apostle John to look into the future and record what the Holy Spirit dictated to him. And so we have the book of Revelation revealed to us the events of the future. And most of it is in chronological order. But the little book is the book of Revelation um, mentioned in um, chapter 10 and verses 9 and 10. This little book. Amen? Hallelujah. So, God chose to call it the little book. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. There are other little books in the Holy Bible, but this is given the title of the little book because it is the final book and it is just part of the whole Bible comprising of the 66 inspired books. Amen. Of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Now, um, um, let us look. Uh, it is also mentioned in Revelation chapter 5, verse 5, and chapter 6, verse 1. Okay. The second question is What are the clouds that are with Christ at his coming? Mentioned in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7. Well, these are the clouds uh, that refer to the saints because clouds speak of the glory of God. Clouds speak about uh, the saints of God, the witnesses of God, and clouds also speak of the, the holy angels. Clouds are like a chariot too that the Lord Jesus rides upon. When he comes as a bridegroom, he will come with the angels, but he will come riding on the clouds. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. But in Revelation 1-7, here it is talking about the cloud of his redeemed saints coming back with him. Amen. To planet Earth. God is good. Now the third question. Where do children go after death? This is a very interesting question. Well, what is salvation? Does everyone get saved? The Bible clearly says God is the judge and he's a just judge. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 1 says, there will not be anyone without an excuse. There is a witness within and there is a witness outside in creation. You lift up your head and you will see the witness in the heavens. Amen. The constellation of stars. You see the 12 zodiac signs. Amen. That's the full gospel. We will do it sometime. In the future amen it was mentioned in the book of Job that's during the book of Genesis it's mentioned in the Psalms and it's very interesting right from Virgo the birth of Jesus Christ right up to Leo amen the rule and reign of Christ in the millennium praise the Lord the seventh day of the Lord now the Bible is very clear. Not all are saved, but only those who respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ, who by faith, amen, believe in their hearts the Lord Jesus Christ and confess with their mouths by faith will be saved. So, Believing in their hearts unto righteousness, confessing with their mouths unto salvation. So, every adult and every responsible person that believes in their hearts after repentance of their sins and confesses with their mouths the Lord Jesus Christ alone hallelujah they will be saved amen now what about children now we are saved by grace through faith that's how we adults and everyone who receives Christ is saved by grace which is the sovereignty of God and by faith is our action and our responsibility and our response 
to his gift of grace. And that's how we come together and we are saved by the grace of God through faith. Amen. But now when children, you look at children, they are not of uh, an age where they become responsible. They, they cannot understand a responsibility to a certain extent. So I believe children, by the grace of God, will be saved by grace. Amen. The grace of God is sufficient to save children. Amen. Praise the Lord. The fourth question. Who are the 1,44,000 Jews? 12,000 from every tribe. These are the specific ones called the first fruits of the tribulation. They are Jews. They are virgins. They are a select company that God himself has handpicked and chosen. The 1,44,000. Amen. And they are the ones who will be saved in the first half of the seven year tribulation. That's the first three and a half years. And they will be raptured, as we already did, into heaven. And they are the ones who will be on Mount Zion. And they are called the nucleus of the new Israel in heaven. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. It's a perfect number. Amen. It's 12 into 12. 12 is divine government. 12 into 12 gives you 144. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Cross. It may be an expression of a multitude but a specific number but here it's given one like 44,000 so praise the Lord so be it amen praise God so this is the nucleus of the new Israel other Jews will be saved even before the tribulation and they'll be part like the Messianic Jews they will be part of the bride of Christ together with the Gentiles Jew and Gentile together in the body of Christ and there will be other Jews the remnant of the Jews that are going to be saved towards the latter half of the one of the three and a half years where they will also flee away from the Antichrist. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now we move on. The fifth question. What about the rapture? Is it the pre-tribulation rapture? Is it the mid-tribulation rapture? Or is it the post-tribulation rapture? I want to tell you, the post-tribulation rapture doesn't hold any water. No way. People are just confused about the coming of Christ as the second part of the coming mixed with the first part of the second coming. So as a bridegroom and as a judge and they are all confused about it. But I want to tell you there's I believe it's not even the mid-tribulation rapture, although many believe in that, because it's loud and clear that the saints of Jesus Christ 
will not be given beyond what they can bear. God will make a way of escape. It's made very clear, as we already spoke in one of the sessions, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. The church in Philadelphia, they were rapture ripe. They were ready for the rapture of the saints, of the bride of Christ. Amen. So this clearly indicates when you look at chronology, it's the time of the rapture. Amen. So we see the first part. Um, we see Apostle John seeing the glorified Christ in chapter 1. Then we see chapters 2 and 3 talking about the seven churches. Even chronology chronologically starting with the first church in Jerusalem and flowing into the tribulation but the Philadelphia church stops at rapture amen and then you look at uh, chapter 4 and verse 1 so chapter 3 verse 10 to chapter 4 verse 1 is all about the rapture this is the pre tribulation rapture so if you are born again you will be caught up and in the twinkling of an eye at the sound of the trumpet you will be changed transformed and you will be caught up to meet with the Lord in the air those who are dead in Christ will be raised first and together with those that are living together will be caught up amen in the twinkling of an eye you will have a resurrected body. Hallelujah. A born again body. So it's the pre-tribulation rapture. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. God is good. The seven lamps stand also before the throne of God. The Holy Spirit will take the church with him. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the restrainer is gone. And then will be revealed the Antichrist. And then we will see the third temple being built. Amen. So, the let's look at the sixth question. The sixth question is... Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 Apostle John is called up he says um, come up hither right the angels calling him and so the question is is it only Apostle John that has been called up to heaven is he alone being raptured into heaven as an experience or whatever or bodily taken to heaven I want to tell you he's caught up like Apostle Paul into the third heavens but it is the Church of Jesus Christ and he's part of the Church of Jesus Christ that is going to be caught up in the rapture he's the final of the 12 apostles that represent the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Number seven. Now, when we look at Revelation and we look at Daniel, Daniel is a book that is um, the revelation of the Old Testament. There are many things in common and much before, 500 years before Christ, these things have been revealed to uh, Prophet Daniel. And so now looking at um, um, 
Daniel chapter 2 and chapter and verses 36 to 45 and Daniel chapter 7 verses uh, 1 and then 4 to 14 uh, and we see all these kingdoms but now just to put it quickly and plainly what we see in Daniel and what we see in the book of Revelation is quite common first of all there are seven main empires in the world like the seven heads of the beast that's the Antichrist one is Egypt second is Assyria third is Babylon fourth is Medo-Persian that's the Medes and the Persians and then comes the Greeks or Greece and then comes Rome the sixth and the seventh one seventh one is Rome revised now in Daniel the first two kingdoms are already passed Egypt and Assyria have already passed these kingdoms have passed it's before the book of Daniel and so it is Babylon that is ruling Nebuchadnezzar is ruling and Daniel and his friends and Israel has been they've been um, taken captive in Babylon they are captives but um, here we see Nebuchadnezzar talks about the dream and this huge statue of the golden head the silver um, shoulders yeah the two shoulders in silver and then the brass torso right and that's the stomach area and then we have the two iron legs and then the feet of iron and clay now what are these these are the various kingdoms after the first two kingdoms there are five more kingdoms uh, that is the existing kingdom Babylon and then moves on to the other four kingdoms so Babylon is gold it's all the grandeur of Babylon and the glory of Babylon it's a real strong empire and then we have the Medo-Persian it's not uh, as glorious it's in silver and not as glorious as Babylon but not weaker than Babylon equally strong yeah so we have Medes and Persians two arms right in silver and then we have brass or bronze and that is Greece amen we have Alexander the Great and you know and then his the kingdom was divided into four generals uh, whatever but that was the Greek Empire and then we have the two iron legs which is the Roman Empire okay and the feet which is iron and clay speaks of the Roman Empire the club of Rome revised they are still in control they are still in control of the European Union and they are still in control of the various banks uh, Vatican and all these things they have their tentacles all over with the Freemasons and um, and the uh, Illuminati and the Luciferians all those things okay so they are the platform for the final kingdom the ten horns and the one little horn is the Antichrist the ten horns are the ten kingdoms okay so that's uh, about it the the Babylonians are like the lions and uh, uh, the Persians uh, are the bear uh, Medo Persians and like you have Russia where as a symbol of a bear 
uh, you have the U.S., the symbol of uh, an eagle. Amen, the, the bald eagle. And, uh, uh, you know, we see the uh, leopard as uh, the Greeks. And, um, you know, also we see the ram and the he goat. Yeah, they two fight. That's the Medo Persian Empire and the Greek Empire. And they both clash against each other. And Greece wins. Yeah, so it is all the uh, the the world empires following. This is all human history, and it is his story. And yet, God's people go through all these empires without being conquered. Today, Israel is a nation that belongs to God. Amen. And we all belong to our God. That is why none of the Middle Eastern or any other power on earth cannot destroy Israel. Other nations will be crushed, all other empires will be crushed and uh, smashed up, but Israel will be a nation forever. Amen. And so we see the rock in that statue that is seen in Daniel, the rock is Christ coming and hitting at the feet of the statue, destroying the Antichrist and his forces, and the whole statue becomes like a heap of rubble, amen, and all the kingdoms of this earth become the kingdom of our God, and Christ is in charge in the millennial rule and reign of Christ. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Isn't it wonderful? Praise be to God. We can talk about it more. If you have other questions, you can always ask. But I've got two more questions going. The eighth question is, what Revelation chapter 4 and verses 6 and 8 talk about the four living creatures around the throne of God, around the Lamb. Amen. And uh, those four living creatures are full of eyes on the inside and on the outside. I mean, all over. Amen. In front and behind. Now, the question was, what are those eyes? Well, those eyes are, are really a reflection of the Lamb. Amen. They are living creatures. They do not rest, but they are on constant guard. They are guarding the throne of God. The four living creatures are reflecting the Lamb seated on the throne, in the center of the throne. That is why you have the four Gospels, yet one Gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the four living creatures, the lion, the ox head, and then we have the cherub or the man and the flying eagle. Amen. Jesus, the kingly Messiah. And then we have uh, Jesus as the servant. Amen. The kingly Messiah, Matthew to the Jews, or uh, Mark to the Romans. Yeah, as a servant. They were men of action. Briefest gospel, 16 chapters. And then Luke is Jesus, the Son of Man. Amen. The Greeks would always look for a perfect external figure, intelligence, all those things of a perfect man. Jesus was presented as a perfect man, the Son of Man. And then we have the flying eagle and John, Jesus, the Son of God. Hallelujah. Amen the eagle. Wonderful. So here we have the eyes are knowledge. The eyes see through. Amen. Hallelujah. And we see that these eyes of the living creature, uh, they signify a revealing of 
the inmost being. Amen. The innermost being. The revealing. Revealing. So their eyes are always seen. Watching. Amen. Guarding. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's so. Um, also, when you see the eyes, you see the nature of God and the being of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And the ninth one is what is seen in Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11 verses 1 and 2 where John the Apostle is to, given a read, a measure and to measure the temple but to leave the outer court unmeasured. Now what is this temple? This temple is not uh, the temple mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 40 Ezekiel 40 talks about the millennium temple during the thousand year rule and reign of Christ, the real temple of God. Amen. That's the measure that is being taken, just like accurate measurements in the tabernacle and the temple of Solomon. Amen. So here is an accurate measurement. But Revelation 11, 1 and 2 is talking about the third temple that is to come up in the seven year tribulation. The Gentile coat is not considered because that part is going to be judged. Right? So what is measured alone is going to be considered. God is watching. Why is it called the third temple? The first temple after the tabernacle was the temple of Solomon right and then we had the temple of Zerubbabel yeah and uh, during the time of Ezra Nehemiah building the walls and then finally we have um, uh, Herod also renovating the temple of Zerubbabel so the temple of Herod is not the third temple the third, it was destroyed completely, completely in the 70, in 70 AD. Amen. It was destroyed completely, like Solomon's temple was destroyed by the Babylonians. We see um, the temple of uh, Zerubbabel or Herod's temple destroyed completely in 70 AD. It was called Herod's temple not because he owned it. But he helped renovate it because in a way he wanted to gain favor from the Jews. And so now there is no temple. So the third temple that is going to be built, I believe it's ready in pieces. Amen. In parts. And it's going to be fixed together very soon. That will usher in the Antichrist. It will usher in sacrifices made by the Jews in the first three and a half years and the latter three and a half years the Antichrist is going to break his seven year covenant with Israel and betray them and then hound after them Amen so thank you for your patient listening God bless you and we will meet next week the same time. How did you enjoy today before the Bible study? Some little quiz that Pastor Agnello has given you? Great. Hallelujah. So uh, read the next uh, chapter uh, 16 and uh, we, will, we will enjoy it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for all that we learned today. Continue to bless us. And Lord, cover the seed that has been sown in our hearts and minds with your blood, that it would fall on good soil, germinate and burst forth 
into living faith and by the growing in your grace and in your knowledge we would it would just humble us to bow down before you and worship you in Jesus mighty name we pray and God's people say Amen Thank <laughs> you.